Lesson 6, Part A, Dreams and Visions. This series of lessons are from Thomas Bud Moore's book, Hearing the Voice of God. The back cover gives a little bit about the book and the order of the lessons in this series. <clears throat> At the bottom of the page here is the Amazon.com author page site for Thomas Bud Moore's books. Hearing the voice of God. The importance of hearing the voice of the one true God, Yahweh. Reading from Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1. The Lord God said to me, <clears throat> Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke to me, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. I heard him speaking to me. Eight different ways God speaks to a believer. God speaks. Are you listening? First, we must talk about again. We've got to go over this time and time again. We'll be going over these things. All right. The written word of God is the first way God speaks to all humans through his written word of God. That's the first way he speaks to all humans. There are many translations of the word of God. These are man's attempt to translate the original Hebrew writings and the Greek writings so that we can understand them. Scripture reading. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 13 through 16, Colossians chapter 1 verse 25 and 26, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and 13. The written word of God is the acid test for all the voices that speak to a believer. It's the acid test for every, everything. Hallelujah. The acid test exposes false prophets, false Teachers, false pastors, evangelists, false apostles, and prophets, and false teachings and doctrines. Anything contrary to the Word of God or explains why it nullifies or cancels the Word of God or the works of God is false. Even if it looks good or sounds good, it's still false. Even if it's in, if it's, <clears throat> if it is not in line with the scriptures and is not in context with the rest of the scripture or scriptures such as first chapter, paragraph, books, or even the whole of the scriptures. It is a false doctrine and a false teaching. The reading for this is a scripture reading. First Corinthians chapter four, verses one through five. First Corinthians chapter two, verses one through 16. When I give you scriptures, 
I give you, like here I just give you chapter 4 of Corinthians and then I gave you chapter 2. Read them in that order because you read them in a different order, it doesn't make as much sense. It doesn't flow correctly. All right. The second way God speaks to all people is there's still a small voice. There's still a small voice is a conscious man. This is where God has put his laws, a primary place where the Holy Spirit speaks to all humans. This is the voice the believer must come to know. Yes, the Holy Spirit speaks to all believers. All people on earth hear the voice of one true God through the Holy Spirit in the conscience. But those who don't know the Holy Spirit, 99% of the time, they will not follow it. All these people out here doing all these ungodly things, they're not paying attention to their conscience. They burn their conscience to the place where they can go do whatever they want and not have any guilt feeling about it. The small still voice is how the one true God communicates directly with the believer today. Anyone who says God does not communicate or talk to the believer directly today does not know the Holy Spirit of the one true God, Yahweh. The reading for this is in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 25 through 27. The Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 25 through 27. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they know me. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature will have their minds set on that nature desires. But those who live according with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. That's important to think about that. What you think about is what is your filter for the Spirit, Holy Spirit speaking to you. There are many reasons the mind is out of sync with the Holy Spirit. An unrenewed mind takes from what is from the Spirit or the Holy Spirit and perverts it to its own will. If the mind is trained to man's doctrines, man's teachings, then the doctrines and teachings of men become the filler of the mind rather than the true, pure Word of God. When the Word of God is contaminated by preconceived ideas of man's teachings, organizational teachings and doctrines it becomes a hindrance to hearing the voice of the one true God clearly and distinctively the contamination becomes the filter rather than the pure word of God flowing think about it this way you take a coffee filter you put coffee in there and you pour hot pure hot water over that coffee and it comes out, the coffee beans that comes out doesn't come out pure water does it comes out looking totally different comes out as coffee the coffee contaminated the pure water to something you wanted that's what happens when the mind is contaminated with the with is renewed to a contaminated Word of God. That's what happens when the mind is contaminated with a contaminated Word of God. The one true God uses the last six ways mainly to confirm what he has been speaking to the believer, what he has been instructing the believer, or what he has already placed in the believer's heart or what he's been teaching me. Rather, rarely does the Holy Spirit three, speak through the one, one last six ways to initiate guidance or instructions. However, there are times when the one true God will use the last six times to initiate to initiate something when it, the danger is intimate. He will emphasize that danger sometimes in these last six ways. The gifts of the Holy Spirit is another way. God communicates with believers since the Holy Spirit is given on the day of Pentecost. Shall I, oh, 
to those who believe. There has been gifts that flow through those believers who accept the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is being fully immersed in the Holy Spirit. If the believer has not yielded his mind, emotions, and, and will over to the control of the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to have that control, then the believer is not truly baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that person will, and that believer will never speak in tongues as long as he has control. The gifts of the Holy Spirit have been in operation since the day of Pentecost. All right, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Joel. In the past days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Now notice what it said in 2 and 4 there. In the book of Acts, it says, as the Spirit enabled them. Not as the person enabled themselves, but as the Holy Spirit enabled them. One of the reasons Paul wanted to go to Roman, Rome was to impart to the Roman believers some spiritual gifts so to make them stronger. And so they could mutually encourage each other. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, 11 and 12. To the Corinthians, Paul had to define the spiritual gifts so that the unity within the church body could come. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are described in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and chapter 12. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are described in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 11. Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong. That is, that you and I may mute may be mutually encouraged by each other. Now it's a five-fold ministry. Five-fold ministry. The reading for the five-fold ministry is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 6 through 16, and Matthew chapter 24 and 25. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 13. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for the work of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Fivefold ministry is to teach, to lead, and to guide, and to bring a congregation in the unity of the Holy Spirit. They are also to be a living example for the believer. If they are not living an example, as in the book of Acts, they could be false ministers of the fivefold ministry. On the other hand, they were taught, they may, be, may have been taught not to do some of the things in the New Testament, things of which would make them a true minister of the true gospel. When the true minister of the fivefold ministry is ministering under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will confirm and vindicate by the small, still voice. Sometimes a confirmation of the small, still voice comes like a, yeah, yeah. If the believer's spirit, in the believer's spirit, it is usually something God has been dealing with them about, something God has shown them in the Word of God, something that God wants them to do, or something God has been teaching them. In addition, everything fits perfectly into Scripture and does not contradict Scripture, and is always in context with Scripture in context. When the Holy Spirit does not confirm or vindicate a teaching 
for what is spoken to the believer, it should be taken and put on a shelf and leave it there until the Holy Spirit reveals it or has vindicated it. A teaching or what is spoken should not be used until the Holy Spirit has vindicated it or has revealed it. Even if it sounds good or looks good, looks right or sounds right, okay? Sometimes that teaching may not be for you today, but maybe for down the road. It might be a right and true teaching right with the scripture, but you may not be able, God may not want you to start operating in it right now. And the Holy Spirit has vindicated, so you take that teaching and put it up on the shelf. And when you become mature enough to where you can handle that, then God will let you put it into your life. Okay? I've done that with a lot of teachings that God has, I've heard over the years, I've taken and put it on the shelf, and then been, eventually the Holy Spirit will bring it back and say, Phew. and I'll be walking and living it, and not even realize I've been doing it. But see, I put it on the shelf, and I didn't try to walk in it. See, it might be for your neighbor, the person sitting next to you, or the person sitting in front of you, or the person sitting behind you. It might be for them right now. But it might not be for you right now. It might be for you later on down the road when you've had enough scripture, enough practice. Or you may not even be going down that path. Okay? Another way God speaks to people and believers is through dreams and visions. He even speaks to non-believers with dreams and visions. Okay, dreams and visions are very important. And God is still using them today. Mm. A lot of times God will show people things that's going to happen in their lives. And sometimes we can do things to change them. Sometimes we, God shows us them things in dreams and visions so that we can prepare ourselves to receive what is coming down the road. Like a death of a, <clears throat> of a mother or a father or a sibling. God might show us that. And we might... <clears throat> They might be far away and might be nothing that we can do about it. So God is, what he's doing, he's preparing us to receive that so that we don't, it doesn't take us off the path that God has us on that we're able to walk and receive it and walk. Okay, it doesn't destroy us. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Let's read Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Joel, the prophet Joel here. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Joel. In the past days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. The use of dreams and visions are, are as important today as they were during the times of the Old Testament New Testament times. Dreams and visions sometimes are hard to differentiate between when a vision when when a vision comes between the M. <clears throat> Start over again. The use of dreams and visions are as important today as they were during the times of the Old Testament and New Testament. Dreams and visions sometimes are hard to distinguish between them. When a vision comes at night, it's hard to tell with a dream or a vision sometimes. In general, dreams come while a person is asleep and a vision comes while a person is awake. Generally, that's, that's the way it goes. When God the one true God is speaking in dreams and or visions. The believer usually has some type of instructions and warnings or even a teaching. Every person who has dreams and visions are not a prophet of God. Although prophets do operate in dreams and visions very often because they are a spokesman, spokesman of God. Just because a believer has dreams and visions and operate in the revealing gifts of the Holy Spirit does not make that believer a prophet. 
because a prophet has a prophetic gift, which is more than just dreams and visions, and more than the revealing gifts of the Holy Spirit. Dreams and visions come from God just as important today. Dreams and dreams from God have meaning. They are not like regular dreams. Dreams of God have substance to them. Most of the time, dreams from God will have to be interpreted by the believer. But dreams do not have to be interpreted. They do not have to be interpreted. Can be called night visions. Sometimes dreams from God will come to pass just as like visions. Sometimes dreams and visions are warnings of dangers to come. They must be taken with great care when a warning comes through dreams and visions. Sometimes there's nothing that can be done except for the believer to be prepared. Sometimes it is for the believer not to do something that will end up being harmful to the believer. <clears throat> These warnings that God gives us in dreams and visions are important. We fall short a lot of times. All right, let's read from Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 23, 28, and 29. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream. But let the one who has my word speak, speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Now there are false dreams and false visions that come from the enemy. So we have to differentiate which ones are which. If it's if it's a if the dream and the vision has fear in it is the fear has fear associated with it. No, most likely it's not from God. Feeling of fear. Zechariah ten two. Idols speak deceit. Diviners see visions that lie. They tell dreams that are false. They give comfort in vain. Therefore. The people wander like sheep, oppressed for lack of a shepherd. Visions usually come while a person is awake. Sometimes God will put a person out in the spirit or into a spiritual sleep to give them a vision. A vision from the one true God comes while the person is awake and it seems to be happening for them. It could be described as seeing a motion picture over top of what is happening in the world. A vision at night is called a night vision. <clears throat> it is not easily, it's not easy to tell if the night vision, if it's a night vision or a dream. It's hard to tell the two, hard to tell between the two of them. You just sometimes you just can't do it. While meditating on the things of God, I would have fall into a sleep. You know, how maybe I would wake up at night. When I have a, a, a night vision, I would wake up at night for a moment. And while meditating on the things of God, I would fall into sleep when the vision would come. It would seem so real as if, I would, as if it was really happening. Now, I've had some really unique visions like that. God was usually teaching me, right? Stephen had a vision when, <clears throat> when the Sanhedrin came against him. Stephen had a vision when the Sanhedrin came against him. When he was testifying about Yeshua HaMashiach, Stephen saw Yeshua standing at the right hand of the throne while he was preaching to the Sanhedrin. Then, during the stoning of Stephen, he saw the same vision again. Stephen, this gave comfort to Stephen in his death of being stoned. Scripture reading, Acts chapter 7, verse 1 through chapter 8, verse 3. Reading from Acts Chapter 7, 
beginning at verse 54. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Many times, angels from God will appear in a vision rather than in the physical. Angels are important messengers from the one true God. Angels of the one true God only speak what the one true God has spoken. There are angels from Satan who masquerade as angels of light. Every angel may be tested according to 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. First Epistle of John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see where they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out from the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. I've used that scripture time and time again when I'm in casting out demons. I've had them try to talk to me and I'd say, shut up in the name of Jesus. Did question, did Jesus Christ walk through from the flesh? Because I want to know whether the person talking or it was a demon. I says, Question, did Jesus Christ walk through the flesh? And when I and if it was a demon, they would shut up and leave. But if it was of God, they'd say, Yes, he did, and start prophesying. Hallelujah. That's how you test the spirits. Because if you don't test them, you're going to get led astray. Because the devil's out here to lead you astray. Because he does not want you to become that that conduit for God's love conduit for God's power, conduit for God's compassion to touch the world. He don't want you to be that. All books available by Thomas Crosswalker Moore are at Amazon.com. The HTTPS address below is for the web address of the author page at Amazon.com. Also, the books can be viewed and checked out at my web page at CrosswalkerTBM.com. Adventures of Jesus is my first book. It's my testimony about how I come to the Lord and first two years of carrying the cross.
in Christ's realities is a lesser series that's important to new believers. But also, for those already in Christ Jesus, it, this study of lessons will bring forth answers to many of your questions about who am I. The lesson springs forth what it means to be born again. All books available by Thomas Crosswalker Moore are at Amazon.com. The HTTPS address below is for the web address of the author page at Amazon.com. Also, the books can be viewed and checked out at my web page at CrosswalkerTBM.com. Here are a few slides from my walks from 1981 through 2012. And a total of 17 crusades. Contact information. You can contact me through crosswalkertbm at gmail.com. Please reference the title of the video at the beginning of the message. My web address is crosswalkertbm.com. More information about lessons, books, CDs, DVDs, and even my um, YouTube page. Uh, you can check out Facebook at Thomas Crosswalker Bud Moore. My author page at Amazon.com is listed below. So, may the Lord bless and keep you all.